If you've ever been on set and somebody plugged in a light or maybe Crafty turned on the, the water pot and your set went dark or you lost a couple of your fixtures, that means you tripped a breaker, you overloaded the circuit. And I'm gonna talk about what exactly that means and what you need to know to prevent that from happening. My name is Logan Reynolds and welcome back to my channel on improving lighting and safety on your film sets. In this video, we're dealing with house power. We're not getting into generators or electrical rigging or anything like that. I just wanna help you understand the basics of how a house might be wired and how you can go about counting amperage so that you are not overloading the breakers. So we're dealing with something called Ohm's law. So there's a cheat to remember the formula. Uh, it's called West Virginia, WVA. And that stands for watts, volts, and amperage. And if you draw it out in a little triangle, uh, the W is up at the top, V is lower left, and A is lower right. Watts is how much power your device is pulling. Volts is how much power is being supplied to your device from the wall outlet. And amps is the relationship between the two. So let's start with a hypothetical real world example that you are filming a scene in a living room of a house. So you're gonna have duplexes in the wall. You might have one or two per wall. An important thing to understand is that they're likely all connected. So I always like to take a look at the breaker panel in a building that I'm filming in. If you're lucky, there might be a label next to each breaker that tells you what it controls in the house. Now this is not always the case. It's not a guarantee that you're gonna have labeled breakers. And if you do have labeled breakers, it's not a guarantee that they're right. If it seems like it's newer construction or newer wiring, the chances that it's labeled properly are probably pretty good. Now, when you look in the panel, each breaker is going to have a number on it that tells you how many amps it can hold. So we always hope to see a lot of 20s. It just gives us a little extra breathing room. So let's say in this hypothetical situation, we have one breaker in our panel labeled living room. So that likely means that every duplex in the living room is wired together and I can pull a total of 15 amps plugged into that living room. So let's plug in our formula and see how much amperage this 1K next to me is actually gonna use. Every device has some technical information written on it. It will give you the wattage that it uses and it will also give you a voltage range that the device can operate in. So that's how we find out one of our variables. It's a given for each product. Now we need to know the voltage. Now there's a standard in North America that says 120 volts is the average. That can fluctuate by region, by electrical supplier, and even within the time of day, you can see a little variance. There are tools available to help you measure this and give you a more precise reading. I have here a Klein RT250. It's a GFCI outlet tester, but also gives you a voltage reading. And this is 123 volts, so slightly above average, still well within the operating range of our 1K here. Another tool that can measure voltage is a multimeter. This is a little bit more precise. It has a couple features that the voltage tester does not have. I can flip this to voltage and with my test leads here, stick that into the hot and neutral and I'm getting 122.5. So let's do a quick calculation. If we take 1000, which is the wattage of our fixture and divide it by 123, which is the voltage, that leaves us with 8.13 amps. So this 1K is actually gonna pull about half of what I can safely plug into the, our hypothetical living room set. Now you really don't wanna push the breakers to their absolute maximum. I mean, you don't wanna keep adding things until you're at 14.9 for example, on a 15 amp breaker. You wanna build in a little bit of a buffer and what we use is called paper amps and this is where you can get into quicker calculations. So instead of using your actual voltage that you measured, just use the number 100. So you still wanna measure your voltage so you know that you're within range. But when you're doing your calculations on set, instead of using 123, just use the number 100. A 1K divided by 100 is 10 amps. So that leaves in a little bit of redundancy and gives me a little breathing room. Now, just to help this come full circle for this demonstration, um, you can actually measure the amperage of a device 
with the proper tools. So this is where with your multimeter, this clamp comes in handy. Okay, this is, uh, this is for measuring amperage. However, the caveat is that it can only read amperage on a single conductor wire. I cannot just clip this around my stinger and measure the amperage because there's actually three conductors going through that stinger. Uh, this is my DIY line splitter. It's basically a, a, a short stinger with a section of the outer jacket cut off and I have access to each of the three wires individually. But the way this works is that you're gonna actually plug it in line between your power and your fixture. And now I'm gonna strike this 1K again, and I'm going to take my fluke and set it to amperage, and I'm going to clip this around the black wire. And here I have 8.3 amps, which is pretty much right on par with what I'd expect a, a 1K to pull. That's all I've got for today. Let me know if you have any questions or need any clarification on any of these concepts. I'm happy to answer questions and help you out. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.